Hey, this is Sean Cooper from ShineSocialAnxiety.com. In this quick video, I'm going to show you three ways to instantly improve your voice. Alright, so your voice is one of the most important parts of your confidence and how you come across to people. Uh, as an exercise to find out just how important your voice is, uh, try this. Go out somewhere where a lot of people are having conversations and just listen to people's voices. Uh, if you want, you can close your eyes so you can just look away. Uh, but the point is to just disregard whatever they're doing and even the words they're saying and focus only on how they're talking and what their voice sound like. And if you do this, I think you'll be really surprised at just how important your voice is. People's voices really say a lot about them. Uh, for example, how loud they talk, uh, what their vocal tonality is, if their voice is steady versus if it's wavering, and if it's, they sound unsure of themselves. And when I did this exercise myself, uh, what I found was kind of shocking. I realized that just by hearing somebody's voice for a few seconds, uh, you can almost instantly tell if they are outgoing and social or if they're shy and introverted. Uh, just by a few seconds of their voice. It's pretty crazy and it makes you realize uh, just how important it is to work on your voice and make it sound the way you want it to. Alright, so there are two ideas I want to cover before I get into actual tips. The first idea is that improving your voice is a process. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share with you a couple techniques that are going to give you pretty quick results. Uh, but if you want lasting dramatic changes in your voice, it's going to take some time and effort on your part and dedication in order to uh, make those changes. It may take you a few days or a few weeks or however long it takes you, but I'm just here to tell you that it's worth it. Um, improving your voice, even if it does take some time, uh, really changes how people respond to you and uh, how people treat you. And it really helps in overcoming your shyness. It's a huge factor. Now, I'm not saying that I have the perfect voice, but I think if you could have heard me a while back compared to how I sound now, you'd be pretty impressed with my progress. That's not to say that I can't still improve a lot. I think anybody can improve. Uh, but I'm just saying that I'm going to share with you some tips that help me, and hopefully they can help you too. And the last idea that I want to touch on is that you need to record yourself. And the reason why is because you don't really know what you sound like. If you've ever left a uh, answering machine recording, or if somebody's ever taken a candid video of you, uh, you may have had the experience of realizing that how you sound like in your head and how you sound like in real life to other people are totally different. So you need to record yourself to know what to focus on improving. And as you implement my tips, uh, you need to keep on re-recording yourself uh, to know if you're making progress and what parts of your voice you need to keep working on. You may not like how your voice sounds like in the beginning, uh, but it's worth that initial pain in order to improve your voice in the long run. I suggest if you don't have a microphone, uh, you can get a cheap one at any electronic store. If you need some audio recording software, uh, search for a software called Audacity. It's very good, and best of all, it's free. Alright, so the first tip that I'm going to show you is to change how you feel. Now, this is a pretty simple tip, uh, but I think it's probably the most important one I'm going to give you in this video. And the reason why is because many shy people and social anxious people, um, when they're around people, they feel anxious, tense, insecure, uh, and so on. And then in order to sound confident, they try to change the way their voice sounds. And this doesn't work at all. If you're feeling bad on the inside and anxious and tense, you're not going to be able to hide it from people. It's going to come across anyway. So you have to change how you feel inside first, and then that makes it easier to have your voice sound good when you do talk. Um, so if you want to express some emotion, uh, you first have to feel in your body. So for example, if you want to sound happy, you have to feel happy inside your body, legitimately happy. Uh, if you sound sad and then you try to sound happy, uh, without actually feeling happy, uh, you're just going to sound weird. All right, so it's very important to cultivate the feelings in your body that make you talk well, and that is what is going to help you improve your voice. 
And there are two main feelings that I think you should work on cultivating in order to improve your voice. Uh, the first one is to have an edge of assertiveness and dominance in your voice. All right, so if you record your voice and you find out that you sound kind of unsure of yourself or your voice sounds a lot weaker and more submissive than how you expected it to sound, uh, then this is a solution for you. Try to have a feeling that's sort of like an edge of assertiveness and dominance in your body. And here's how you do it. Okay, so imagine how you would talk if you were giving a command to your dog. You'd probably say something like, sit down, come here. Try it out for yourself and uh, just feel that kind of feeling of being an authority that you feel like when you're talking to your dog because you're not intimidated of your dog. So it makes you have that edge of dominance over your dog. And if you can cultivate that whenever you talk to people, uh, you're going to get rid of that unsureness and you're going to get rid of that weakness in your voice. And it will really make a big difference. And the second feeling they should try to cultivate in your body is to become relaxed. This is so crucial. So I said at the beginning of the slide that most shy and social anxious people are, uh, as the name implies, anxious. Uh, nervous, tense, uptight when they're around people, and this really comes across in your voice. And the solution is to counter your anxiety with relaxation. I give a few good techniques on my blog and a bunch of very good ones in my ebook. I'll always share one that you can use right now with you in this video, and that is to relax your muscles. And the way to do this is to uh, just feel whenever your muscles are getting tensed up and just uh, release the tension. This is probably the simplest technique and you can do it right away. So whenever you feel some part of your muscles getting tensed up, uh, just release that tension, uh, let it go more limp, and then you'll find that it becomes a lot easier to talk when you're very relaxed. Especially try to relax any tension that's around your face and your jaw muscles because that's really going to come out in your voice. Alright, so the second tip I'm going to give you is to have a steady stream of air coming out of your mouth as you talk. And what do I mean by this? Well, I'm going to have you do a quick exercise as you sit in front of your computer. Put two fingers in front of your mouth and then say a sentence. As you talk, feel the air that is coming out of your mouth. Is it coming out in spurts or is it coming out as a steady stream of air? If you have problems with your voice, it's probably coming out in little spurts of air. And this makes your voice not sound as good as it would if it was a steady stream. That steady stream really brings a level of confidence to your voice. It makes it a lot better to listen to. And it's really what all movie stars and radio show announcers and TV actors are taught to do. I actually learned this tip from a vocal coach called Roger Love, who has a great program. And he teaches many big name actors and public speakers how to talk. And this is one of his biggest tips. Have a steady stream of air coming out of your mouth as you talk. And one way to do this is to put pencil on your mouth and practice talking like that. Uh, and that makes you, all that does is it makes you more focused on the air that's coming out of your mouth. And you don't really worry about the words that you're saying. You're just focused on having a steady stream come out. And when you take the pencil out of your mouth, what you'll find is that you can talk a lot better than you could before. And one more tip I'll give you in order to help you talk with a steady stream is to talk with all of your words connected. So talk as if you're saying one big word instead of several separate words. And this is a mistake I see many people making. They'll talk like this, as if you're saying one big word. Instead, you want to connect all your words into one word, like I just did. There should be not even a slight pause in between your words. And this makes it a lot easier to have a steady stream of air coming out of your mouth. Alright, and the last tip I'm going to show you, and this is a pretty well-known tip, uh, but it works really well, especially for people who have problems being too quiet and people telling them to speak up. Uh, so I'm just going to cover it here again, if in case you haven't heard of it, uh, because I find that it works really well. The technique is when you're talking to someone, don't aim your voice at them. Uh, imagine that they're a few feet behind where they actually are, and then talk to that imaginary person way behind them. And this is going to make you talk through the person you're talking to instead of at them. Uh, you want to talk through the person you're talking to in order to have a good volume when your voice actually hits them. Uh, if you talk at the person, 
if you only want to make your voice reach them instead of reaching beyond them, uh, then your voice is going to be way too quiet. And one more exercise I made up that you can use when you're practicing inside your house is uh, as you're talking, imagine that a person in the next room is sitting there and has to write down everything you say perfectly word for word. And just imagine how loud would you have to be talking in order for them to write all this stuff down. So then when you're talking, have that visualization going in your mind. Uh, they have to talk really loud because there's somebody in the next room who's writing all this stuff down. And I find it's a great way to train yourself to talk louder. Alright, that's the end of this quick video. Thanks for watching. I hope these tips help you as much as they help me. And if you like this video, then you're also going to love my ebook, which is called The Shines on Social Anxiety System. You can check it out by uh, clicking the link somewhere around this video or going to shinesocialanxiety.com slash products. Alright, I'll see you soon.